slow your you-know-what down. I know that was pretty cheeky, but there are those 10 people out there that want to find out a little bit more about how I 3D printed this steel. This is my first print with Virtual Foundry's 17-4 steel filament, and I have to say, it printed very well. Like every other Virtual Foundry filament, there's a binder that needs to be burned off in a kiln. During this step, we support the part with ballast, and then move to the centering stage, which requires some carbon to scavenge oxygen. Because this is my first steel part, I'm not exactly sure what I'm going to find here. First observations is a low amount of carbon left, which is a little worrying. But we'll excavate the part anyway and see if we can learn from it. Okay, so this one didn't come out great. In fact, I think it's back to the drawing board. Some level of oxygen may be good, so I'm casting another lid and giving it another go. Yeah, I skimped on the filament here. I, I could have just bought the refractory from the virtual foundry, but I wanted a challenge, so I made my own blend. And a day later, this is what we got. Okay, so we have some brittle parts, and I'm trying to figure out here what the proper firing schedule should be. So for testing, I'm subdividing these debound parts in a few different blends, including one which is a little bit of a slurry, and as you'll see a little later, it was probably a mistake. As expected, the control was totally oxidized, but our slurry, well, it made a little bit of a mess. We did get a promising result though, with uh, some clear metal sheen here. As for the mess, it wasn't a total loss though, because I did get some very interesting results with this steel can. Unlike other steel cans which I've used in past centering experiments, this steel can did not have any signs of oxidation, aka rust. It's just one of those things that I'm going to file away for future me to dig a little deeper into. One revelation that I found during this experiment is that my kiln does not reach the advertised temperature, but maybe it'll be okay. After a few spins in Dr. Cool, I decided to take these parts and try a little bit of experimenting with my copper putty. These are test parts after all, and I want to print and center real Beskar steel. So I need to know if my attempt at infiltration is even viable. The putty is about 43% copper and is intended to be applied on top. What I'm still trying to figure out is where in the process am I going to do this and what's the best workflow. Incredibly, this is looking pretty promising. There's some crystalline growth around the outside of the refractory and clear surface level copper. So I'm ready to try some Beskar again, albeit maybe a little Beskar nugget to save filament. Is it perfect? No. Is it steel? Yes. And I printed and centered it with the same tools that I could do copper, tungsten, or ceramics. So while this approach might not be ready to replace CNC machining, 
I do believe it deserves a spot in the toolbox, even if it's just used for rapid prototyping or cosplay. Because at the price point of under around $2,000 USD, it's very difficult to find something that can produce steel parts. Even Big Stack D sends his steel to a friend who can cast at the higher temperatures necessary for steel. Anyways, I hope you enjoyed the video as much as I enjoyed making it. And, as always, cheers.